Right, let's get cracking. Yeah, sorry, did I wake you up? Okay, um, now then, where had we got to? We had, um, yeah, we got our system at least starting up and accepting all the keys. If you recall, uh, this script was the last thing we wrote, uh, which very simply um, waits for the keys specified in our servers list to become available and then once they become available it accepts them uh, with the salt key command essentially all this salt keys does is copy them or move them from minions pre into the minions directory but the long and the short of it is uh, we accept all of the keys now at the moment there's only two uh, so it's not exactly uh, uh, not exactly um, difficult to replace those uh, with a vagrant file that does the same thing. Um, but it's kind of fun to see that you can you can write a whole uh, uh, you know you can write you can write, write a whole Ruby script uh, that takes a data file and then provisions a uh, set of machines based on the specification in that file okay so we can go to masters the advantage of doing it in a data driven way uh, in this context where we've only got a couple of machines is that we can keep adding to that uh, and do interesting things like uh, write a script that reads the same data and produces uh, some other effect okay now if we'd written it into a vagrant file that would have been much much more difficult to do okay so let's move on then because uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, look at uh, orchestration now as we discussed last time uh, there are quite a few uh, different ways we could attack this problem The simplest way being, uh, we have a file which just contains a list of the minion IDs, and for that list of minion IDs, it has a list of orchestration states within our salt system. Now, I keep talking about this salt system. Uh, we haven't really looked at salt in any detail yet, so I guess today we'll start looking at salt. Now we've got our two machines running, uh, and as we've said, uh, as I've said in the past, we've got two machines at the moment: SRV001 and SRV002. Machine one is our master, uh, which also has a minion, and machine two is going to be our network services. So it's going to be things like. DHCP, the name server, it's going to be our gateway router to the internet. Um, uh, it'll be our uh, external firewall to our LAN. Um, and all of those things uh, are going to be controlled by the minion, uh, or at least configured by the minion, running on that system. Uh, so we've got two two minions in our system and one master at the moment okay how do we go about configuring our system well first of all we have to understand what salt does in terms of the configuration management uh, the first thing it, it, to understand is uh, and i think we've covered this briefly before is that like most configuration uh, infrastructure configuration management systems uh, salt is uh, declarative that is you say what you describe the state of the system as it essentially must be uh, and the configuration management system ensures that essential state is in place what it doesn't do is it doesn't have any memory so as i said before if we install a package uh, and then remove that installation from actually do you know what let's just 
let's just do it. It's much much better with these things if you can actually see it working. So uh, let's do a simple one. Um, so we're logging into the master server. And I'm going to go, I'm going to sudo straight away because everything we're going to do at the moment is going to be in route. Now, there, there are ways of setting up users uh, with, for example, limited access. But at the moment, to keep things simple, we'll do it all as root. Okay, so let's do something really simple. Um, this command says, uh, send to all of our minions and request that they run test.ping. Now test.ping, uh, you can see it consists of two things. Test, which is the uh, <coughs> uh, execution module, and ping, which is the function we like to run. Now it's not ping as in if we were to ping another machine on the network. This is just a simple uh, thing that basically says to the minion are you running the minion sends a message back to the server the master uh, and says yes i'm running okay so if we do that we can see we get responses from two minions which is what we expect server two and server one and the response we get from each is true uh, which basically means that yes everything's working fine uh, we've got proper communication between the master and the minion so that's in essence that's what our system always does now we after this we can put whatever parameters so for example well let's, let's go on to something a bit more different now there is uh, salt has its own uh, file system uh, and typically this is held at uh, uh, SRV slash salt uh, now this won't exist at the moment. I don't think it creates it by default. No. Okay. In fact, uh, you might find oh SRV does exist. So if we uh, go to SRV uh, and if we make the directory salt. Uh, uh, so we're in the directory salt now. Now in here, we can construct uh, states. And these states are the are files that gather together declarations of what we want our system to look, look like. Um, and each uh, part of a state uh, is it referred to variously in the documentation. I quite like stanza as a, an explanation. So each stanza uh, executes essentially one function. So let's write a simple state. Um, let's just call it simple.sls. They all end in sls. <coughs> uh, so simple sls, this is going to be our, our simple state. Um, and uh, the first thing we need to do is give each stanza a un unique name. Now we're going to get onto the more sophisticated elements of this when they're generated, uh, but for now we'll just call this uh, my simple state. Now, now they don't have to be um, like this, uh, where they're uh, uh, underscores or anything like that. You can have spaces, you can have anything you like. This is a this is a YAML file. Uh, by default. Uh, so anything which is valid YAML you can do in here. So my simple state uh, and this is going to be um, uh, the, the, the next part of this is going to be um, the function we want it to run. Okay, uh, it, Which in this, in this case is to do uh, uh, a package install. Uh, and this is where I can't remember off the top of my head whether it's install or installed. Uh, and that's a rather embarrassing admission given the number of times I've done this. Uh, however, um, let's go to all sort modules. 
Uh, the documentation, by the way, is not bad. Um, and I can never remember the specifics. So we're interested in uh, salt states. Okay, and there we go. So the package state. Uh, and you can see it's installed. Okay, so package install. Now the question then is, well, okay, what is to be installed? Now you can see here in their example, they've named the, the stanza Vim and package installed by default will take the name of the stanza. So if we just left it like this, uh, without the colon on the end of there. Okay, so if we just left it like that, uh, oops, uh, oh dear, it's going to be one of those days. Uh, if we left it like that, uh, then it would attempt to install the package called my simple state, which is obviously not what we want to do. Okay, what we do want to do is install the package. Uh, 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 ah, yeah. Now, there's some debate about whether you should indent like this or uh, uh, or whether you should indent like that. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is install Vim properly because this is obviously not the Vim I'm used to. Uh, personally, I think when you're indenting for an array that looks neater okay so the name that we want to in, uh, in, uh, install uh, is uh, in this case it's going to be Vim okay so all we're asking this to do is install Vim okay so let's do it really quick so now now instead of putting in star, I'm going to say SLV001. Uh, actually, let's put it all in quotes so it doesn't. If we if we don't put this in quotes, uh, then the command line interpreter will try and expand that as a file glob uh, with a star in there. But by putting quotes around it, that prevents that, and salt will then get it. Okay, so we're going to install that with. Um, now we give it the name of the state okay no we tell it the function we want state dot apply then the name of the state which is simple uh, okay now you'll notice it's simple without the file extension There it goes. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so here's the output we got. Uh, it confirms the name of the stanza within our state that is being run, the function that's being run, the name of the package which is being installed, the result which was everything was okay uh, a comment which is generated by the function uh, when it was started how long it took now you can see here it's in milliseconds so it's about seven and a half seconds okay and then it lists out the changes which is which have been done so we installed we didn't have a lib gpm2 it's installed that we didn't have a vim we we had that uh, and oh, we have a new vim runtime okay so now when i type vim uh, and we edit that simple.sls now we've actually got vim rather than vi uh, which means it should behave a bit better okay so 
Uh, so that's in, that's applied it uh, locally. Now, if I run that command again, but this time allow it to run on all of the minions, i.e. both of them, you can see that Silver 1 okay, has responded much more quickly, 43 milliseconds. And the reason for that is it didn't really need to do anything. Okay, it took a look, saw that it didn't need to make any changes. Okay, uh, uh, so you can see here it, it ran. Okay, said, yeah, I'm going to install Vim, uh, but all of the specified package were already installed, so in actual fact, it made no changes. Okay, it still counts as successful because, again, what we've asked it to do is install the package vim and since it's already there that's that's fine that's successful that configuration matches this configuration on the other hand uh, it said okay we will do the vim or this is on the second server uh, okay and it's again it's gone through this installation process uh, and this time we've got succeeded one changed one okay and these this is the list of change uh, what, what we've actually changed on our system okay here we've got succeeded one but there's no changed right? okay so far so sexy <clears throat> okay uh, so we've actually now got vim installed on both systems now let's say I wanted to remove it from this uh, server one. Now I can't just uh, reassert the state and remove that state. So what I can't do is I can't simply remove this stanza. If I just remove this stanza, then what I would end up doing, it, well, let, let's do it. Um, uh, how can I do this without... Um, uh, how can I do this and still illustrate to you what's going on? Uh, I can't really. Because if, if I remove this, then it's just removing simple, uh, which is uh, the whole state. Uh, hmm, should have planned that better. Um, I tell you what, let's install something else. Uh, so let's have another stanza. Mm, so another, another one. Okay. And. Okay, so this time we will install. Uh, let's have a think. Uh, oh, I know, tree. Okay, because trees are handy things to have around. Okay, so again, if I do sort star uh, state dot apply simple. Okay, so we're gonna again we're running the, within the module state. We're running the function apply. We're giving it the parameter simple, which is the state that we want it to apply. <clears throat> okay, so you can see we've got uh, oops, a summary is two things succeeded okay now this is the summary for server one okay so two things succeeded and one thing was changed so the first thing that succeeded up here is the vim okay but since that's already installed it just succeeds this one in blue tree it succeeded and it was installed okay so that was server one and up above we have server two. Okay, now the order uh, is it can, can be different each time. Okay, because the minions respond at different times, so there's no guarantee that the order is going to be server one, server two, or server two, server one. Okay, they will the minions will respond whenever they respond. Uh, so don't expect these to be in any particular order. So again, uh, Vim already installed. So it's successful, but not changed. 
Okay, tree successful and changed because we've got the new and the old. Okay, so succeeded two, changed zero. Oh, sorry, changed one. So now I can illustrate what I was trying to get. So if I do, uh, uh, if I do uh, edit simple again. Now, if I wanted to remove him, I can't just remove this standard stanza. Okay. If I do that and I rerun this, okay. Okay, now you can see it's run. We've got one succeeded uh, and no failures. But Vim is still installed. Okay. If I want to get rid of Vim, I have to do this. Okay, now then, package, now is it remove or uninstall? Uh, okay, so installed. Mm, these are all the various options, latest. Okay, there we go. So we can have it removed or we can have it purged. Um, we'll just do removed. Oops. Okay, so package removed. And then, okay, so if I now run simple, and we've got succeeded two changed one. Okay, so you can see that what it's done. Uh, is, uh, in each case, we've got to, we've hit the remove vim stanza. It's run the package removed, and it said all these packages are removed. Vim, okay, so the new, there's nothing installed. Old is the old version that was installed. Now, <clears throat> so now you might be thinking to yourself, well. That just seems like a really oops, uh, uh, having, having removed Vim. Okay, that's a very long-winded way of adding and removing packages. You know, why can't we just use apt get install or whatever? And the answer is uh, let's just uh, set this up to reinstall Vim. The answer is uh, that. Uh, the answer is the, the package uh, module within uh, Salt uh, deals with, for example, installing packages using different package managers. So you don't have to know that you're using APT. Um, it will switch to using YUM uh, or APK or whatever the, the package manager is on the particular system that you are trying to install Vim on. So all you need to do is say, I want this package installed and leave the rest to uh, to sort, uh, to sort out. Okay. So we should have Vim back again now. Whoosh. Cool. Uh, the other thing we can do uh, is we can uh, actually install both of these things uh, at the same time. So we could, instead of saying name, we could say uh, here's a list of packages and we could give it a list of packages to install uh, and then it will install them together 
Okay, so we could, for example, say uh, uh, packages, and then something like that if memory serves. Okay, so you can see now we're installing multiple packages, uh, which makes installed Vim, uh, installed Vim a bad name for the stanza, but <laughs> you get the idea. Right, I'm oh, sorry, have I disturbed you? <laughs> oh, it looks good kill, Kenny. Uh, right, so, uh, yeah, so, so that in essence is what we're going to do uh, but we're going to do some much more complicated stuff now uh, let's let's talk about something else um, data uh, salt has different sorts of data that it has uh, 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 that it can access okay so um, one uh, so Okay, so so there are basically three, but there are actually lots. But broadly speaking, there are three forms of data that we've got to manipulate. There are grains, uh, and grains are pieces of data that are specific to a minion, and they're held they're held on the minion. And when we run salt command, like um, Uh, and we run it against say server two uh, and uh, now then if I want to see them all uh, oh. is it just list nah come on grains nah. Hmm. Not quite what I had in mind. Oh, that's because those are states. No. Oh, blimey. Honestly, it wasn't that long ago I was doing all this stuff. Mm. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, items or LS. Oh, not shit for brain some days. Um, okay, okay. So this is a list of all the items known to server two. Okay, and this contains, as you see, it's it's generally speaking, it is um, stuff which is specific to that machine. So uh, we've got. Uh, okay, so we've got, for example, uh, what the BIOS is. Uh, we've got the various CPU flags that are in effect. Uh, oh, can't wait. Uh, we've got um, its current working directory, which is the root directory. Uh, the disks that are available. Uh, we've got its name, its IP addresses. Uh, it's uh, it, the MAC addresses of the various interface cards. Uh, what kernel version it's running? Ah, local host name. Uh, what salt version is currently running? Uh, it, so you get the idea. Okay, there's lots and lots of stuff uh, that we can interrogate. Uh, 
So uh, that is grains. Now, some people try to use grains for an awful lot more than uh, machine uh, information about the machine itself. Uh, and we are going to use grains. Um, but again, for attributes that are specific to the machine, uh, don't use grains. Um, information about what the machine is for if you see what i mean because uh, that's not that's not information which is specific to the machine to the to the machine itself um so for example uh some people would use a grain for, for for something like uh if it's a if it's a web server uh, they'll have a grain which says you know roll or something like that uh, and that's fine i guess uh, the problem with that is it could be in a, in a flexible environment it could be that those servers are repurposed the name might be the same but it's it's grain would then need to be changed and you'd be constantly accessing it that kind of information is better kept in pillars now pillars pillar data is data which is resides on the master okay and uh, pillar data is still specific to uh, individual minions, okay, but is not about the machine itself. It's not about the what the minion is running on. So pillar data is much more flexible, uh, and pillar data uh, can be made accessible from the master uh, to whichever minion needs it. Grain data, on the other hand can only be made available from the individual minion to the master. Uh, pillar data is on the master and can be made to whichever minion it's appropriate to, and that's decided by the master. Uh, all of this becomes a lot clearer, I think, uh, when we start doing it. Uh, now then, the other type of data, uh, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll look at pillar data in a second. The other type of data is mine data. Now, mine data is a bit of an oddity. Mine data allows uh, minions to provide data for the master with the expressed purpose of sharing that data amongst other minions. Uh, a good example of using mine data might be to provide the uh, the LAN IP address of a machine, you know, a private network IP address of a, of a machine. So, yes, that's available in grains, and yes, the master can interrogate that, but the master can't share grain data. Uh, with other minions okay it can it could say this is the grain data for that particular minion um i saying you can't it can't share it is not really true but it it it's not something that's a part of uh, the specification okay mine data on the other hand okay the mine uh can uh, the data can be mined on each of the minions okay given to the master and the master then has permission to share that which with with other minions um, i guess that's kind of clear uh, now we're not going to worry about mine data right now so really all we're concerned about at the moment is grains and pillars so let's have a look at pillar data so we've got our states that which by default sit in this serve salt directory if we now go up on level to our serve directory and we make a directory pillar okay now pillar data sits in the pillar directory okay and uh, And here we go. So this is where uh, things sit. Now this is the default, uh, which is to have it sitting in sort of pillar. Okay, uh, and we can now within within the pillar. Okay, we can specify what data uh, is available on what um, 
minions. So in our base environment, uh, which is basically the default environment, the following data is available to all minions. Okay. And let's say, well, let's follow their example packages. Okay. So let's, well, uh, let's call it um, default packages. Okay. Okay, so that's, uh, that specifies what is available to all of the minions is this default packages, okay? And that means that we need to have a default packages.sls file. Okay, and so now uh, we can specify uh, in that default packages, okay? We can specify a YAML data structure, which will then be available. So, Mm, let's call it uh, default. Well, let's call it. Um, uh, this is a terrible name, but it, it makes it obvious that it's a different thing. So my packages, and then uh, we'll put in uh, vim and tree. Okay, so we've got two 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 packages, right? But they're in the. Um, are defined in the pillar okay so having done that I can now say for all uh, for all uh, for all of my minions get me pillar items all right so here we go so now you can see for server 2 there is something called my packages which is an array containing vim and tree Okay, for server one, there is a thing called my packages, which contains vim and tree. If I wanted to specify a um, something which was specific only to server two, okay, then I could edit this top SLS, and in here I can put server two. Okay, so anything in here is only applicable to server two. Uh, and we will call it, um, oh, let's be really unimaginative. Okay, so this is server two packages. Right, so now server two packages dot SLS. And in here, we're going to put um, uh, our S2 packages okay and uh, we will put things that will only be installed on um, on server 2 uh, which uh, let me see uh, what's the Debian package with DHCP uh, there we go. Let's say DHCP server. Uh, is that the name of the package? Um, ah, there we go. ISC DHCP server. Uh, I think that's the name of the package actually. Yeah, okay, so there's one for client and one for server. Okay, so if we if we just put IRC DHCP server in that, okay. So now if I do the pillar items, you can see We've still got my packages, which appears in both, but the S2 packages only appears in server two. So if a server makes a request uh, for pillar data, 
it will always get back its own pillar data. It won't get the it won't get pillar data back for another server. In fact, it can't even request pillar data for another server. Um, uh, and if it tries to, uh, the master will ixnay on the data A. Okay, it will it, it will refuse. Okay, in the same way that uh, a a minion cannot ask for grain data about another about another minion. It can also not ask for pillar data about another minion. And this is where mines are a bit funky, because a mine allows minion A to ask for mine data about minion B. Okay, and that's that's the difference between the two. That's the, that's where mine data really comes into its own, is the allowing of the sharing of data between minions. Okay, so you can see here that this data uh, will now allow us to do things like this. If we go back to our state, um, oops, uh, am I down, down one too far? Oh, to our salt directory. Okay, and we can get the simple SLS. So now instead of specifying this list specifically, okay, uh, what I can do, ooh, ooh, it's going to be one. Right, so instead of doing it specifically, I can actually specify this as a piece of data. Now, uh, pillar data is recalled by uh, using ginger, okay, and this is uh, this is a ginger expression, okay, so we can get this. Uh, now, how you recall pillar data, there are several ways of actually getting to it. Uh, the simplest way uh, if I now look it up, where are you? Hello. Uh, uh, here we go. So you can see here, you can either access it from this array. Uh, uh, that's grains. Uh, here we go. Okay, you can either access it from the array, uh, or you can access it by doing. Um, uh, yeah, by doing uh, a salt, uh, uh, by invoking a salt function, uh, we'll get onto that. Uh, there are there are reasons for doing it diff uh, the different ways, uh, but for now, let's just do it the simple way. Okay, which is uh, uh, the, okay. Briefly, the the reason for using the function would be when this pillar data item. Uh, which is actually a dictionary, is not provided directly to um, uh, to the ginger uh, when, when this pillar, uh, sorry, when this state is is processed, and that is particularly apposite when you're using one of the extensions. Um, so, for example, and we will use this later. There's a, an extension called a stack pillar, uh, and because of the way stack pillar works, um, this pillar uh, dictionary is not always provided uh, in a convenient format. Okay, we we might, for example, want to get uh, to go down several. Uh, we might want to go down uh, to. Uh, it, it might have pillar data, which is uh, a colon b colon c colon which you know three nested levels of pillar data and getting it this way can be a bit awkward because if if level a isn't defined you'll keep getting errors because yeah? you'll go uh, you, if you do something like this okay uh, okay which is fine because it will get the pillar a and then it will look up pillar B. The problem is if pillar A is not defined, then this thing will choke. Okay, you'll get an error. Whereas using the get pillar function, you can actually do it a, a different way because you can specify uh, it like uh, A colon B. Okay, the point being if A is not defined in this context, that's fine. Uh, Okay, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Uh, okay, so at the moment we've got those two pieces of pillar data. Uh, uh, yeah, let's keep it simple. Uh, we've got two bits of pillar data. Okay, uh, we've got the S2 packages 
and the default packages uh, which we called my packages okay. so if we do it like that and all right if you look okay so we got my packages items now we can do um the apply state uh, uh simple okay we got the same basic result if however uh i now edit uh, the simple state okay and I can add uh, let's do uh, uh, let's call that install basic and then we'll call this one install add-ons terrible names Okay, and this one uh, is going to install packages pillar uh, but uh, instead of my packages this time it's going to install whatever uh, this is going to illustrate a good uh, the point actually about it failing yeah okay so let's do s2 uh, uh, I can't remember what I called it now. Uh, uh, what did I call it? Uh, yeah, S2 packages. I'll do. Okay. Now then, because S2 packages isn't defined for. Uh, S1, we should expect a problem uh, if we apply the state. Okay, bang. Okay, so we've got this problem where uh, it failed uh, because uh, it has no attribute S2 packages for server one. But you'll notice that uh, it goes off on server two, it's fine. Okay, and this is the weakness of doing it uh, using the um, uh, yeah using using the pillar access. Okay, now then, if I remember correctly, and there's no guarantee now in my memory. Uh, what you can do is you can use a function. Uh, now then. Uh, I, uh, do we invoke it directly or do we invoke it via salt? I think you can invoke it directly. Uh, uh, but in order to invoke it directly, uh, yeah, it's called pillar uh, dot get. Uh, but you can't invoke it inside these because these are just uh, to get a variable expansion that allows me to run a piece of code and because we're now getting uh, oops, uh, uh, a function okay there we go right now then <laughs> uh, this still doesn't really solve the problem uh, because uh, we're going to get uh, well uh, let, let's run it on. let's see what happens um, okay Ooh, lots of horrible things uh, unknown tag pillar mm, okay uh, okay uh, I've obviously. Oh, uh, come on. This is, this is fucking ridiculous. Right. 
Oh yes, I was afraid of that. Yeah. Okay. So oh, well, I was right. You do have to call it in directly. Uh, and you can do it with this because now we're back to. Uh, It's not. Uh, it just goes to show you how quickly memory fades as you get older. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so now we've run two states, and right now we've got a problem. Okay, because this fella is now running. Okay, but it can't. Uh, it can't. Alec, it can't find the package install add-ons because you remember. Okay, if we don't provide this thing with any packages, and we aren't for, for server one, because this is going to return nothing, uh, nothing useful, okay, then it will try to install installed add-ons. Okay, so we, we would end up having to make this conditional uh, on this. Okay, uh, which is obviously not ideal. Now, uh, uh, right, uh, yeah, so uh, unless we can provide it with a default list of packages which is benign, uh, then uh, as a default, uh, and I don't think uh, if, if memory serves, whoops. yeah, providing it with an empty list is really not going to help much. I don't think. Um, yeah, which just goes to show, uh, in actual fact, it does. Uh, so. As long as as long as we provide something, okay, rather than none, uh, then uh, then this thing's happy. So we provide it with an empty list, and it's copacetic. Now, then, why have we done it this weird way? Okay, uh, the reason is that salt uh, salt is um, uh, is a dictionary that holds references to, amongst other things these uh, these functions yeah now pillar get is a specific function for recalling spill it, uh, for recalling pillar data if we just did this okay that is going to invoke the python get function on the pillar dictionary okay which will not do what we expect it to do okay for, for one thing it won't take a default yeah. so we use salt in order to get the pillar get function which is actually the salt get function on the pillar data <sighs> right <sighs> right okay so that gives us a way of getting our packages um, and you'll notice that the uh, because the s2 package includes the DHCP server we now should have uh, on server 2 okay we've now got the DHCP server and um, let's do sudo now, is it dash or underscore? Uh, uh, right, so there you can see. So we do have the server actually running on here, and it's throwing an error at the moment uh, with good cause uh, for two reasons. One, we haven't configured it yet, and two, uh, it's 
uh, it's going to be conflicting even when it runs with the one on the local area network uh, so we really don't want it to run uh, just for the time but actually uh, yeah okay so what we can do though is we could actually uh, say make sure that the uh, uh, DHCP server is disabled when you've installed it now we could do that by putting it in here okay so we can disable the DHCP server finger trouble Uh, and in here, uh, we could actually put in a command to say uh, uh, service disabled. Uh, I think service disabled just takes a. Oh Okay. Uh, yeah, so we can do disabled uh, and the name. So it's the same, it's the same basic form. Okay, and the name is ISC. Well, uh, uh, yeah, let's just do it explicitly. IC DHCP server. Okay, so that that stanza will make sure that the DHCP server is disabled. Now, this brings us to the question uh, about the order in which these things are run. Now, the answer is within a state, the stanzas are run top to bottom. So it will install basic, then it will install add-ons, then it will disable DHCP. So as long as we know that this can, contains the installation of the DHCP server, we know that that order is is, is okay. Okay, uh, we can force an order by uh, specifying specifying a uh, uh, one of the um, out, uh, sorry one of the uh, uh, dependency enforcing rules within our state okay so uh, we can do things like um, uh, there we, go. we can do things like this yeah? well, we've got a require okay so uh, here's, here's an example yeah? let's, let's do it let's do it this way uh, so uh, let's instead of saying install add-ons and doing this nonsense which is fine for illustrating using pillars but more realistically uh, if we do uh, uh, okay so we do install DACP Okay, and that will do package installed uh, name ISC DHCP. Uh, uh, now we're going to get into a, a sticky wiki because of the. Okay, let's do. Um, uh, simple server two dot ss. So we're going to create a new a new state file. Uh, and I'm going to take that out of there and put it into 
Okay, so this state is only intended to be run on server two. Uh, now, putting it into uh, uh, putting it into the same stanza uh, is okay. Uh, hmm. Whether this is a good idea or not uh, is a matter of personal choice. I think that these are better put into their own separate standards. Okay, so uh, uh, Okay, so we can check the service is running uh, by uh, have, yeah, having the service running. Uh, now, one of the things you can specify is whether or not it is enabled. Uh, okay, now enabled means is it started at boot time? Well, for now, we're going to disable it. Okay, and in actual fact, uh, we don't want it to be running. Uh, we want to make sure that it's not running. Okay, so what we want to do uh, uh, hmm. uh, forget about that. Let's just duplicate that. And uh, da -da 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 -da. okay, so we can say uh, disabled, uh, which we've done. Right, and the word is disabled uh, is dead rather than stopped. Okay, so this will make sure that it is disabled and that it is um, stopped. Now, the other thing we wanted to do uh, is make sure that this thing always runs after this thing. Right. And this is where the require comes in. Okay. So this, so require, uh, okay, says that we should only check that the service is running if we've already done the installation. Okay, so we can say require. Okay, then we have to say what it is we're requiring. Okay, so we're requiring that we've run the package module from the install. All right? So you'll notice that it's it's not saying that we want the ISC to be installed. It's saying we, we need that stanza to have run. Right. Okay, so now uh, we don't want to run simple anymore. We want to run the simple two. Okay. Now you've got to be a bit careful. Oh, this is server twelve because we don't want to run this on server one. We're on server two. Uh, ah, right. Now then, that's interesting. And the reason for that is that we haven't specified a top file. Okay, 
So we can have a base. So very similar to the way we have done with uh, the pillar. Okay, everything gets the simple. And server two gets uh, simple e12. Uh, oh, simple server v12. Let's change that name because it's crap. Uh, simple server zero zero two. Uh, it's still not a good name, but it, it, at least it's more obvious what's going on. Put the SLS on the end. Okay. Bingo. Okay, so you can see here it's been disabled uh, and it's dead. Uh, so if we now go uh, here, okay, and we try to apply that to everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So now, it, now because we've run it explicitly, it's actually installed it on server one as well. Right. So as before, uh, if we copy simple server two and call it uh, simple server one. Okay. And if I simple server one, okay, so what we're going to do here is, uh, oops, uh, package perched. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the package. And Uh, one. Right, so now we've only got it installed on two again. So now I can do something kind of cool. And this is this is we can do state state high state and what this will do is it will apply the rules as they are specified in that top file okay so in this top file we're saying everything gets the the simple state but only server 2 gets simple v002 uh, which of course uh, uh, simple installed srv002 okay so uh, So hopefully nothing will change now because we should be getting, there we go, three succeeded, one succeeded. Okay, so the one that succeeded on server one was simply the install of the basic packages. And up here we've got uh, eight, only two states succeeded, but three standards succeeded. Okay, so we've got the install of the basics, which was from the simple SLS state. Then we've got install DHCP and initiate DHCP service, okay, which actually makes sure that it's dead. So we're actually getting 
uh, what we expected, okay? But only specifying the high state. And the high state is everything which is specified in this top file. Right? But there is nothing preventing us from forcing any given state onto any given machine uh, at the moment. Right? So uh, anyone with the rights could log on here and they could actually turn DHCP on, uh, install it onto uh, server one by specifying that that state should be applied to server one, even though it's not in the, um, uh, even though it's not in the high state definition of server one. Uh, right, so, uh, yes, uh, where was I? Yeah, so, yeah, so that require, yes, coming back to that require, uh, if we look at uh, the, uh, if we look at this, right, it installs DHCP, then it initiates the DHCP service, right? If we do, if we do the following, uh, if we buy uh, simple server 2, Okay, and we take that stanza and we put it at the end. Okay, so now the nat the natural order, the order in which it's defined here, is to initiate the DHCP service and then to install it, which obviously is nonsense. But this require will make sure that the order is correct. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's too, yeah, that's not too high state. Um, Uh, let's do specifically server two state apply simple server two. Bingo, right? And so you can see that the run order is install DHCP, initiate DHCP. So our require has forced the run order to flip from what it was. Uh, in our in here huh? the natural order is the ACB server is initiated and then we install but this require tells the system that that should be flipped okay and we actually end up with install them it's, now that's a limited direct use within uh, here why should you be explicit? Well, <laughs> first of all, it's the, uh, the the caveat that always goes with anything like this, including when you're programming, and that is explicit is better than implicit. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of accepting defaults and things like that because uh, you can get some real nasty bugs in systems if you accept defaults. So... The best thing to do is always be explicit. I mean, that said, I am accepting a lot of defaults in here. <laughs> okay, but but the the point I'm trying to make is that when you do accept defaults, you're also accepting a certain amount of risk. Uh, when we specify in here the require order, we are being very explicit that we have to do the install before we do the initiation. Now that might seem like it's not very important, but let's say. Uh, we had created uh, a dependency uh, which would have caused the natural order uh, to be broken. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, this is a bit tricky to explain without illustrating, but let's say we'd, we'd got uh, okay, so we've got our file okay oops so we've got our natural order if we didn't have this require in here okay it's quite possible that something outside of this state could invoke uh, this initial dhcp server initiate dhcp service in fact uh, if we split this and go to simple mm, uh, it, that's a terrible idea, Mark. But it'll do for illustration purposes. Uh, uh, right. So in here, yeah, this install basics, we could have, if we were psychotic, 
Okay, have said require. Uh, and we could have required a service uh, initiate DCHP server. Uh, okay, now this is psychotic because, of course, uh, we know that simple.sls is going to be installed on all machines. That isn't always going to be present. So the stands are initiate DHCP service is not always going to be there and it will cause all sorts of problems. But just for the sake of argument, now, if simple.sls was executed first, okay, when, when this thing is trying to work out what's going on, it is possible that this thing would be run, then this require would cause initiate DHCP service to be run, okay, then it would try to run the install DHCP, okay, uh, which would obviously work out wrong. In this particular case, that wouldn't happen, okay, but for the sake of argument, you can see what I'm getting at is that if an external stanza referred to this initiate DHCP, it is perfectly possible that at some point, because the system has no way of knowing other than uh, the system's got no way of knowing other than by the convention that uh, these are run in order. Okay, and that, by the way, is not by any stretch of the imagination an absolute given it's just the way the system works at the moment okay uh, there's no guarantee that those two stanzas will run in that particular order unless you put that require in there as soon as that require goes in there that is a guarantee because it says it, uh, under no circumstances can initiate DHCP service ever be run before we've satisfied the installed DHCP stanza okay uh, so it, it locks it into place. Uh, however, uh, uh, okay, uh, right. We're getting we're getting our system in a bit of a buggers model, but we hopefully you're beginning to see how these things all fit together. Right? Um, I am putting together. And I know this is hard to believe given my performance this morning, uh, or this afternoon rather. Uh, I am putting together a course which takes us through all of these things step by step by step. Okay, uh, I'm going to be editing it in order to fit better what we're doing here. Because uh, I want the narrative of this uh, step by step, uh, or, or I want the narrative of this setup to feed the main courses I'm doing. What main courses? Well, uh, we've got a lot to cover, okay, before we even get this far. Uh, consider we've encountered virtualization and virtual box. Uh, we've encountered Vagrant uh, as a utility. Uh, which we've we've covered briefly uh, in our setup. Yeah? Uh, we've encountered Ruby We've encountered Python. We've done some bash scripting. Uh, if you've been following the Raspberry Pi streams I've been doing, uh, then it's even more. We've done Quimu. We've dealt with manipulating image files. We've dealt with partition management and partition handling. Uh, we've dealt with Linux mount command. Uh, we've done. We yeah. You know, we've covered a lot of fairly technical stuff. I've done it fairly briefly, uh, but we've covered quite a lot. What I want to do is for each of those things, I want to be able to go back and investigate and dig a bit deeper. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> and of course we've done Git. Uh, we've done a certain amount of Vim. Uh, um, so there's, there's a heck of a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, some of it won't take much time at all. And other stuff, it really bears doing a deep dive on. Uh, and in doing that deep dive, uh, it means rather than this sort of ad hoc stuff uh, and I'm making it up as I go along, uh, I'm trying to put it together into a sort of coherent 
well thought out course that explains each individual thing as I go along. Uh, whereas this stuff, it, it will often come out as complete garbage because I've not really thought about exactly how to put stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that is beginning to be put together. Um, and it, it's all part and parcel of what we're doing here because what this system that we're building here is it's the progenitor for producing the websites and the course materials and all that kind of stuff uh, the pipeline that's going to generate it all so uh, it, yeah it's it's going to take a while but we'll, we'll get there right <clears throat> okay so back to the problem in hand uh Installing packages is a fairly low level, simple example of uh, what Salt does. Um, and although uh, uh, at the moment we've, we've used some fairly brutal stuff, okay, so we've done things like this. Uh, uh, we've, we've used the state apply function, which applies a a state or if we give it a list a series of states to a particular machine uh, I very briefly introduced you to this function high state okay and high state uses this file the top SLS file uh, to decide the list of uh, states that should be applied to a machine yeah so uh, I've, I've brushed over what that base is all about uh, that is environments so you can have for example a development environment a QA environment a production environment whatever base is just the default environment for one of a better description I have to say I'm not a huge fan of salt environments uh, I think there are better ways of doing of managing environments using salt um, but it's, it's a fact that it's there, so we'll, we'll have to cover that at some point, uh, but not in these streams. Uh, I'll cover it in the course. So, okay. So, yes, so the top file. The top file, uh, all it does is assemble for, for every minion that matches uh, the second level of the, uh, the second level dictionary. So, in this case, we've got. Uh, let's do. Okay, so in this case we've got we've got two potential matches, everything, or everything that begins with the characters S R V zero zero two. If I was to do this, then it would be everything that matches S R V. By default, these things match the minion IDs okay but they don't have to they can match for example a certain set of grains so you could say uh, this state is to be applied to every uh, machine that has Linux installed on it uh, whereas you know these are all the windows grains or whatever yeah? or we can use a mixture of them uh, we can use a mixture of things to match um, the point being that although the top file is used to segregate which states get applied to what um, it doesn't say this state can only be applied uh, case in point uh, although this okay says uh, if you are given a minion ID, okay, that says I uh, begins with server zero zero two, then if you're in a high state context, okay, then apply simple serve zero zero two the state. Fine, but as we saw earlier, uh, and I'm just going to quit this because I don't want to edit it. As we saw earlier, that doesn't stop me from doing this, uh, where I can say. Uh, where is it? State apply. There we go. So it doesn't stop me from doing something like that, where I explicitly use 
a state and apply it to this server, which is not server 2. Mm -hmm. So top is not really about enforcement as such. Uh, it's it's about uh, defining all of the states that make up the configuration of a machine under normal circumstances. Okay, so if I wanted to uh, set up server 2, I would probably use that. Okay, server 002 star state high state if I knew that that element was unique. Okay, if I wanted to be absolutely specific, then I would give the full name. Okay. And, and so that would absolutely guarantee that only that particular uh, thing uh, got it. If I specify that server one, then obviously, at least I hope it's obvious, uh, it won't get uh, simple service zero zero two because server zero zero one doesn't match this condition here. Okay, uh, so this will in the high state, this state would never ever show up uh, in high state. Okay, but like I said, it doesn't stop me from manually applying it using state apply. Okay, now there are other ways of specifying high state, so you can do things like well, let's just uh, okay. Uh, Uh, that's interesting. It's not as interesting as I thought it was going to be. Let's have a look at the tutorial and see whether. Uh, no, I thought it would have more interesting stuff to say about that. Uh, hmm. Okay, uh, let's do. That's a horrible service system, isn't it? Uh, okay, let's go up to salt modules. Uh, state. Uh, now it's not actually a state. Um, it, it, we're talking about a runner module, so it's actually. Uh, okay, so you've got state high state uh, so we've got uh, th th this is what we're actually running is this execution module state high state uh, and you can see uh, we can uh, do exclusions and all that kind of funky stuff uh, oh yeah that's another interesting thing we can do uh, when we're debugging this stuff um, we can do things like uh, run, the, run the high state in a sort of test mode uh, or a mock mode. Now, <laughs> uh, the difference between the two, okay, is uh, that uh, in uh, in running a test, okay, what you're doing is you're doing a dry run. So none of the none of the modules, the, uh, none of the states are actually. None of the state functions are actually executed. So, for example, if I do, uh, and, and this this applies to state uh, state apply as well. So, if I was to do something like this, uh, state apply uh, state two. Okay, but I was to put test equals true on the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what would happen is. It would actually not not actually execute this simple serve too, but it would tell me what it would do if I did execute it. Okay. Right. So the reason this is yellow, okay, uh, is because we didn't actually run install DHCP. Okay. Uh, what we did was we did the check for uh, whether ISCDHCP server is installed, 
right? But we didn't actually execute it, uh, the package installation. Right. And the service is dead primarily because the service shouldn't actually be on there. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, did, did we do a purge? Mm. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, evidently we haven't done a, a proper purge. Right, yeah. Small beer. Um, because uh, yeah, we needed to actually do a complete purge, I think, to get rid of this. Uh, hmm. Anyway, uh, I'm not too worried about that because we're going to be rebuilding this machine many times. The point being, okay, that the test simply does um, a dry run. Mock, on the other hand, does a bit more because what it does is. It, it uh, the, the, I mean, the result in this case will essentially be the same. But what Mock does is it says, if I had run this, okay, what would have been done? Uh, well, if I had installed DHCP, then the result would be true, and I would have actually done this. So you can see here, it says not called mocked. Okay, uh, so. Oops. Uh, Okay, so up here, okay, this line here, okay, it says it's not called, it's been mocked out. But you'll notice that it's not yellow anymore, it, it's actually functioning as if it had been called and was successful. Okay, so that's the principal difference between mocked and test. Test will simply do the check uh, and will report back that it didn't do anything, okay? Mocked will pretend that it did something. Okay, so it will do the check and say, if you'd actually run this, I would have done this, the result would have been true, and the thing would now be installed. Hmm? Which is slight, a, a, a subtle difference, uh, and the use case for them uh, is slightly different. Mocked does, however, have its limits, and that is, even if we'd done this, right, Mocked doesn't know what that package actually installs. So if the service was genuinely gone, okay, and, and hadn't been installed, uh, then that initiate DHCP service uh, would be mocked, okay, and it would pretend that the service was dead, irrespective of whether it was or not. Yeah. Um, so but it doesn't know uh, that that service would have been installed by the uh, package install above it. Right, see what I mean? Yeah. So mocking uh, gives a slightly more realistic output than test insofar as it tells you what would have happened if it had actually run kind of, uh, much more closely than um, test would. Uh, but test will, will tell you uh, things like, um, I would have done this mm -hmm. uh, if I'd actually executed. That makes sense. Let's see if I can summarize that without the word salad. Uh, so test will report what actually happened, but what would happen if you ran it. So for example, it will report, I would have executed this package install, but because I'm in test mode, it remains unchanged. So it report it as unchanged. Mock on the other hand says, I would have run this package install, and if I had run, then the thing would be installed. Therefore, it counts as a success. Hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, the course will be much, much more careful about <laughs> explaining these things. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right. Okay. Now then. So. Okay, so now we've got uh, a rough idea. And, sorry, mate, am I squashing it? Oh. 
So now we've got a very rough idea about um, salt states, salt pillars, salt grains, right? And we'll, we'll see, we're, we're going to use these a lot as we go on and get deeper and deeper into this. Right? Um, but we said uh, we needed orchestration. Now, orchestration is slightly different. So far, we've been using the salt command. Okay, so we've used salt key command, okay, which is for key management. Uh, so we've used that already when we were uh, doing the initial acceptance. Uh, we've we've used the salt command, which is the main command you use in a master minion system, okay, because salt is for commands to the master or the master, okay. Uh, so this uh, salt initiates that. Uh, we haven't yet looked at salt call, which is for invoking commands against the minions. Uh, uh, in fact, it'll only invoke, invoke a command against the local minion. Okay, can't invoke it against remote. Uh, let's let's do that just for shits and giggles. So you, you recall we did. Uh, uh, okay, so we can do a command like that. Okay, uh, but we can also do a command over here. Bearing in mind this is on server two. Okay, we can do salt call. Now you don't specify the minion because it's always going to be the local minion. Okay, and we can say state apply. You're not you're not making this easy, Kenny. Come on, hey, come on, because you're going to end up pressing the keyboard and then I'll be mad. <laughs> yeah, you stay there. Okay, so I can I can tell it to apply the state against this machine. Okay, of uh, simple serve zero zero two. Mm. Okay, so this is going to uh, run that against this local server. Okay, and oh, lots and lots of issues. Uh, what was it? Uh, right. Okay, so it, it ran, okay, and it succeeded, so it did the job. But you can see that we're getting some warnings out. What are the warnings we're getting? Just out of curiosity. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's a deprecation warning. Okay, those warnings, by the way, will have been coming out in the log. Uh, so, because when this command runs on salt, uh, sorry, on, on the master, okay, so when it runs on the master like this, uh, all this really does uh, when we do a state apply like this is it says send this part of the command, okay, uh, so, so send this part of the command. Okay, to the minion oops, uh, specified here. Okay, or oh, minions specified here. Okay, so the master takes this list of minions or the minions that match this expression, all right, and it sends them this command. Okay. And in essence, that's that's what it does. Okay, and the minions, in essence, uh, run that command, which then calls back to the master for all the information it needs. Right? Kind of. <laughs> so that's what salt call does. Salt call just simply initiates the minion and says, "Look, pretend you've been asked to do this by the master." In effect, okay. So the question then becomes, well, can I now do this? And from the minion, can I run a state which I I, I shouldn't? Yeah, so let's try it. Okay, you can see the answer is uh, yes, I can. Okay, and I've actually now removed the DHCP server. So you can see. Uh, that allows me to uh, get hold of states to which I don't have rights, okay? But obviously I do have the rights, okay? But what it won't let me do is it won't let me get hold of pillar data, which I don't have any right to. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see. Aha! All right, now we've only got local pillar data. 
What does that mean? Well, it means that we've only got the data for this minion. So pillar data, when, when queried from the minion, which is the only place that will query from, okay, it will only give you the pillar data which is relevant to this particular machine. Yeah, so we can do it over here as well. Okay, because remember, okay, so this only gives me the pillar data relevant to server one. Okay, so now you can see, although my packages, okay, which you recall, okay, so my the default packages was defined, uh, which defines my packages, yeah, uh, was for all for all possible minions, yeah? whereas server two packages, which is the package which defines the S two packages is only defined for minions where their ID matches this expression, SLB002 star, okay? So when we do salt call pillar items on server two, we get both my packages, which is matching star, and we get S2 packages, which is matching server 002. Yeah? Whereas on server one, we only get the sort of general purpose my packages, yeah? Uh, which is defined here uh, under the all-encompassing star. All right. So this is how we keep uh, data segregated. We don't keep states segregated, but we can keep data segregated. So if our states are more data-driven, uh, then they're more secure. What do I mean by that? Right, let's say uh, instead of being kind and generous like we have been, uh, and we uh, uh, we had set up that the server two pa um, that the uh, simple server one uh, uh, let's see okay so this is not uh, this is not data driven in any way okay but if we try to use for whatever psychotic reason. Uh, we try to use some pillar data, so salt uh, pillar get, uh, and we try to use the S2 packages. Okay, um, without any default. Uh, okay. We would find we, that that would balk, okay. And the reason, the reason being that that pillar item S2 packages is simply not defined for server one, right? uh, which would mean that we couldn't run that on server one, okay. Uh, well, perhaps better, uh, honestly. Uh, let's let's do it a better way. <clears throat> okay, this is this is a better way to illustrate it. Uh, all right, so simple version V2. Uh, all right, uh, 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 zero zero two. Hello, there we go. Uh, right, so here, uh, okay, so if we, uh, yeah, this, this is a better illustration. So here, I can specify this salt, uh, um, pillar get. Uh, S2 packages. Right. Now, mm -hmm. okay, so now if I run this with high state, everything will still work fine because, uh, because in our top file. That simple server 02 is only run on server 2. Okay, so I can do something like this. Uh, mm, yeah, I can just do that. Right? And everything should work just fine. Assuming I haven't made any stupid typos. <laughs> you see? Uh, I was hoping for too much. 
Okay. Okay, so my server one and server two. Ah! <laughs> Install DXC, the problem counter installing packages. Uh, run scope as you need. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Install DXCP. Uh, okay. I, I evidently have made another typo. Because what's happened is uh, uh, that should be available to server two. Mm. Uh, okay, I'm slightly puzzled now. Two packages. Uh, that should be. Oh wait. Uh, ah. It's because S two packages is going to be an array of names. What I should have done uh, is do. Okay, this is this is not not cool. Uh, oh, let's do it properly. Okay, so we want the name, and it's S two packages um, zero. Okay, because we want we want the first entry. There we go. So the the problem. Um, there we go. So the problem was that uh, the uh, ISDHCP server okay, was being returned from the pillar as an array and name doesn't accept an array and therefore it was defaulting back to the name of the standard which is install DHCP. As soon as I put bracket zero bracket on the end, okay, uh, it was getting the zeroth element which is to say the first element, which is the actual name, and then name was fine. Okay, so eh, just a bit of a cock up. Uh, anyway, not to take away from the point I'm trying to make, which is that uh, when we when we run that salt high state, okay, okay, uh, the pillar data is being got for pillar two, which gives us that result. Now, if I try to force that simple server two like this, okay, so server one is now calling it. Okay, so now what we're trying to do is force that simple server two state onto server one because we're running it locally. So we're telling the local server one minion to apply that state. But remember, that S2 packages entry is just not available within server one's uh, pillar data. So we do expect an error this time, okay, because that zero element simply isn't available. Bang. Okay, so you can see here, simple server two, okay, failed. Ginger variable string object has no element zero. Right? And that's simply because, and, and this dog's breakfast is simply because simple server zero zero two uh, state does not, uh, is trying to invoke the pillar get. Uh, 
okay it's trying to invoke this pillar get and it's trying to get s2 packages but s2 packages doesn't exist so what it gets back is an, a, a, a null and it, and it, uh, and it, I'm not sure whether it returns a null or an empty string from the looks of it it gets an empty string yeah? uh, but which we then try to get the index zero of well you can't because it doesn't have one yeah, so we quite rightly we get an error okay so you can see in this case because this state is specifically engineered uh, in this case for server 002 and it's specifically engineered because that value is only ever going to be instantiated on that pillar uh, for that for that server 2 yeah. so trying to force it here it just isn't going to work yeah. now there are ways around it but <laughs> i won't go into that um, yeah. Uh, okay. The the obvious way of get, getting around it is to go into the pillar data and actually add that S two packages. Okay, and that would allow us to then use that uh, state. But the whole point about doing it this way is to help to ameliorate the problem of states being applied incorrectly. So the more we can make our pillar data the key to what gets installed and what doesn't get installed and what gets run and how it's configured. Okay, the better for us because pillar data is very specific to a, a minion or a set of minions right? whereas states as we've seen I can apply a state just by telling the system apply this state because uh, up until the point I screwed around with it I could I could apply simple server 2 state even though it's implicitly intended to only be put on server 2 because uh, we don't want multiple DHCP servers running on the same LAN. Yeah. Uh, uh, although you can, uh, it gets, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't want that. All right. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. So that's the long and the short bit. Right. Okay. So what else can we learn from while we're in here? Okay. So we've got our simple states. We've got our pillar data. The next level, as it were, is um, to use orchestration. Now, this requires another thing on, on salt, which is salt runners. Okay, uh, if we go back to all the salt modules and um, it's not orchestrate, it is. Uh, here we go, salt runners. Okay, and one of the salt runners is uh, uh, well, salt. No, that's not what I was looking for. There we go, the orchestrate runner. Yeah. So, broadly speaking, we're going to run uh, a state module function called orchestrate. Okay, and then we give it uh, an orchestration state. Okay, now these are special. Um, they're special but only insofar as the way they are structured right? uh, so they're, they're ordinary state files right? but they are designed uh, to be run on the master and one of the fields that you provide them is the list of minions to which the orchestration stanza is to apply yeah get myself in a right pick layer okay 
Uh, well, let's let, let's let's just look at the examples, right? Okay, so um, here's an example. Right? Um, we are going to run uh, such. Uh, so we're going to run. Uh, okay, so this is just going to run the remove command. Okay, on all minions. Uh, uh, this okay uh, is going to run file copy, which is uh, one of the salt functions. Okay, it's going to run it against all minions. Okay, it's given two arguments to this function. Okay, the source and uh, actually it's the target and then the source weird uh, so uh, and this is for keyword arguments okay again keyword arguments to this sort function right so we should be able to look up uh, in here uh, File and file copy. Where are you? Okay, so this is the function that we're running, and you can see that this keyword argument, remove existing, is the one that we were referring to back here. Uh, okay, so that was the Keyword argument we're referring to uh, in in this salt pump. Okay, so these are uh, useful. Hello. You know, make my glitch on the stream. Um, so these are useful uh, orchestrations. Are useful for running. Uh, the application of states across multiple minions. Okay, you'll notice at the moment the way the way a normal state works is essentially uh, actually this. Okay, let's do it this way. Um, okay, so conceptually, uh, we've got master. Okay, and then multiple minions okay so minion one and minion two okay and when i invoke a command like uh, salt star uh, state apply, yeah. uh, x okay what this does effectively is it says to minion one uh, i want you to run uh, the equivalent of a salt run, uh, sorry, salt run, salt call, state dot apply uh, x, and it says to minion two, I want you to run salt call state apply x. Okay, and each of these means now is essentially running uh, independent of one another. Right, um, near the twain shall meet. Okay, so minion one will get its own pillar data. It will expand this state. It will execute whatever stanzas are in the state. Same with minion two. It will ask for its own pillar data. Uh, it will get that back. It will expand state X. The point being, all of this happens locally on minion one and minion two. So the question becomes this: If I have a complex state where I have to Let's say, uh, you know, I have to run state x uh, on minion 1, then I have to run state x2 on minion 2, then, and only after x2 is run, I want to run x3 on minion 1. So I can't do that with, with this command, okay? Because if I run x1 
x2 and to x3 from the state apply, sure, x1, x2 and x3 will all get run, and they all get run uh, on, in this case, on all of the machines. So this would run x1, x2, x3 on here, x1, x2, x3 on the end here. Yeah. Even if I specified my top file, okay, and my top file said something like uh, minion one should run x1 and x3, and minion two should run x2, right? And then instead of state apply, I did state my state. Yeah. And I have no states on there. So high state would know that minion one should run x one and three, and minion two should run two. Cool. So we would get x one and x three run on here, and we would get x two run on here. But the, they wouldn't be sequenced at all because remember, minion one and minion two are running completely independent of one another. So minion one would certainly install x one and x three, but it would be no guarantee that x two was present at the time that x three was run. Now, it could be. Uh, X3, for example, might run a service which connects to X2, uh, a database which is created by X2. So X3 might fail, the service might fail. A bit of a contrived example, but bear with me. Okay, X3 could fail if X2 is not already up and running with the database. Yeah. So, how do we ensure this order? Well, that's where orchestration comes in. Okay, because because orchestration runs on the master. Yeah. Instead of relying on uh, the top file or ru running the states manually from here, yeah, an orchestration state can say, right, in the first stanza, I want you to run uh, against target uh, M1, okay, and I want you to install X1. Then I want you to run against target m2 and i want you to run x2 and then i want you to run against target m1 again and i want you to run x3 okay so now the the orchestration state okay enforces this one two three uh sequencing okay uh, in fact, we can go better than that because we can even put requires in. Okay, so we can say, okay, well, this 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 thing requires, uh, uh, yeah, uh, M three requires M two state to have run. So the orchestration can really enforce the uh, some complex sequencing. Okay, then on the master, we simply run the orchestration state. Okay, to uh, correctly run between the minions these states. All right. So that is the way orchestration works and the purpose of orchestration. So why is that relevant to what we're doing now? Well, uh, it, it, in some ways uh, it, it's relevant because uh, in, in our current system we have two machines. Okay. Okay, so at the moment we've got, uh, ignoring the, the, the master minion problem, we've got two minions, right? We've got server one and we've got server two. Now then, one of the things that uh, the setup says at the moment, okay, is that if I do something like a package install, on server one at the moment it goes directly out to the interweb via uh, as it happens ethernet zero which is uh, the, the virtual machine gateway okay if i do a package install on server two it again goes straight out to the internet okay via virtual machine ethernet zero on server two now, what I actually want to happen is I want to close this door here and I want this package install to go via server two and out to the internet. 
Why? Because I want server 2 to mimic our, the router on my final system. On my final system, I'm going to have my general purpose server, the router, uh, which, which is actually a gateway router, which goes out to, okay, it goes out via a modem, but it goes out to the internet. And all traffic from my LAN, okay, so this is the LAN side, uh, needs to go through this router gateway. Okay, at the moment, my uh, virtual system uh, doesn't reflect that. Okay, at my moment, everything kind of goes out to the internet. It's, it's like this, we connected directly out like that. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, uh, one of the first things I want to do is make sure that server 2 is correctly configured so that it can route traffic out uh, to Ethernet 0 uh, on server 2 from anything incoming but only incoming uh, on Ethernet 1 mm -hmm. which is remember that's the central net private network that we set up uh, right back when we were setting up the VM all right uh, and it will actually come from Ethernet 1 uh, on server 1. And I want to block any output traffic initiated via Ethernet 0. In fact, I don't want the route on here on server 1 to go, to attempt Ethernet 1 at all. I want it to go out through Ethernet, uh, Ethernet 1, not Ethernet 0. But before I can set this machine up, this machine has to be set up to allow this route now that is a classic orchestration problem okay because uh, when i run whatever i run on my master i need to orchestrate to say right set server 2 up in the following way before you set server 1 up in this way uh -huh. if i don't do that then there's a danger that i will close this down here without uh, and modify the route and this machine won't have the foggiest idea to what to do with packages that arrive from server 1. Hmm? Which is great until I start doing things like package installs. If this hasn't already been set up, then uh, you know I've got a big problem. Okay. Similarly, uh, I want the DHCP server uh, to be set up on, on server 2. I also want uh, a name server to be set up on server 2. And again, I can't change the DHCP server is not quite so relevant because both of these are fixed IP addresses. But I can't, for example, use the name server uh, on here until it exists and is set up. So this name server uh, needs to be set up on server 2. Okay. Uh, before I change server 1, uh, to refer to that name server as its primary source of name server. Otherwise, it's going to want to go to whatever the default setup on the machine is. Right. So again, I can't change something about the configuration on server 1, specifically which name server it refers to, okay, without uh, first uh, setting up server 2. So again, we've got an orchestration issue. Okay, so there, again, there are two orchestration steps here, okay. I want the name server installed. Uh, I want the uh, routing uh, table and stuff sorted out on server 2. And I want the firewall to allow traffic to come in from Ethernet 1, be routed out through Ethernet 0 on server 2. I want the firewall of this to prevent anything going out at right Ethernet 2, uh, Ethernet 0, and the routing to go everything through Ethernet 1. All right. Whew. Okay, now, this uh, adds to the backlog of things that need to be talked about. Um, this is what makes uh, the, the job I used to do uh, so interesting. Because <laughs> you're involved with all this stuff. Even if, even if you're not actually doing it, you're involved with talking about it a lot to, to, to um, the people who actually do do it. So... What we're going to talk about, we've got to talk about packet networks. 
okay, to get an idea about what the hell I was just talking about with all the routing. Yeah? We need to talk about net filters, okay, which is the uh, implementation for firewall pa packet filtering on on Linux. Right. Uh, oh dear, the focus is a bit off, isn't it? Uh, we need to talk about um, we need to talk about uh, DHCP. Uh, what it's for. We need to talk about name services. Yeah. So we need to talk about DNS. Uh, we're going to implement. I think we're going to use bind. Okay, so we're going to use a bind. Uh, that really is. What? Well, how come that's so out of focus? I think it might just be that blue that's a bit funky. Uh, that's not too bad. Okay, so. Uh, so yeah, we need to talk about that. We need to talk about uh, routing. Okay, routing tables and all that sexy stuff. Uh, so we need to talk about these things at least briefly uh, before we start doing all of this configuration. So there's another thing to talk about. So today we've called, we've covered, admittedly in a somewhat long-winded and blathering way at times. <coughs> Uh, we've covered um, uh, some of the basic features of SALT. Uh, we've seen how uh, very, very simply how SALT states work. We've seen how pillar data works and how it's different uh, to grain data. Although we haven't had a reason to use grain data, we will have when we start talking about um, uh, the interfaces. Uh, because one of the features that we're oh that's another thing that we need to talk about um, we need to talk about uh, how interfaces are named in Linux okay because there's a new way and an old way uh, the old way is used on Vagrant um, uh, or at least on the Vagrant machines we've got here uh, so if I do this you can see it calls them like Ethernet 0 Ethernet 1 Okay, that's the old style of, of naming. The new style of naming is more like um, ENPS01, uh, which is um, uh, the, which is it's still an Ethernet name, but it uses its position on the PCI bus um, as part of the name, and then uh, the device. Uh, Port as, as the second part of the name. The point. No, we'll leave that for another day. Okay. Um, just accept the fact that the new way is better because it's more stable. The old way uh, had an interesting race condition, potential race condition, which could lead to difficulties if you weren't particularly careful about managing it. Um, for our purposes, uh, Ethernet Zero will always be uh, the VM gateway uh, interface, and Ethernet One will always be the private network uh, that we, we, we've set up between the two machines. Uh, what we can't guarantee at the moment um, necessarily is uh, some of the uh, other features. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into all of that. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about it right now. Uh, uh, I've just realised I've got those IP addresses wrong. See where it says one two nine one six eight. I mean, uh, it, it's okay, um, but it's not. It's not one of the uh, approved uh, private networks. We should re that really should say one nine two dot one six eight. I'll correct that later. You know, that's a that's a vagrant issue uh, down here with our data. Uh, 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 it was just a typo. Uh, it, it, for our purposes, it doesn't really matter because it's all on a, all on the uh, private network. Uh, it could screw up some things though, because uh, I don't know who, who normally owns uh, uh, who, who owns the one two nine six eight subnet. Uh, one two nine doesn't doesn't ring any bells. Uh, I don't think I've got a dig installed on this machine. Uh, hello. Uh, have I got 
dig. Oh, I didn't have dig installed. All right, so dig. Mm. Uh, then, uh, dig do a reverse search. If it is owned by anybody, they don't have anything on there. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Reverse IP. It's a name server at NASA uh, that gave a re reply, so one assumes uh, uh, yeah, one assumes that it's an it's a, uh, a NASA IP address range. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll, we'll correct that you know, when we build our system again, you know, which will be very shortly because we're going to clear everything out and start again when we start setting this up. Yeah, you're not helping, Kenny. Hey, are you getting down or are you staying up? Yeah, I know. It's dinner time. Okay. Go on. Go on. We'll get some dinner. Go on. Off you go. Good luck. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, Call of the Wild. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so we've got a fair bit of ground to cover uh, before we can get on, uh, but I think we'll move on fairly quickly. Uh, let me see what's the best way of approaching this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, set up the routing. Uh, make sure that's working. Then I'm going to set up the firewalls. Uh, both of those things are quite closely related. So we're going to look at uh, routing. Uh, well, we'll look at um, packet networks. We'll look at routing. Then we'll look at the net filters. Uh, we'll look at how we can implement all of that using salt. And we'll get that all set up uh, using uh, salt. We'll probably be using grains, we'll be using pillars, uh, and we may even look at a different way of managing pillar data. Um, yeah, so we'll do that next, because uh, that, that all kind of fits together. Uh, then we will uh, we'll probably skip over DHCP for now. Because there's no real need for it in the simulated system as it currently stands. Uh, we'll probably stick the name service on the router uh, and get that up and running. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about, uh, no, actually, no, we'll talk about testing before we do the name service. Yeah, we'll talk about testing and how we go about doing that. Good idea. Right, okay. So there's some stuff to think about. Uh, and I'll see you next time.